We invoke your holy presence, dear Father, to be in our midst as we worship you today. We ask that the Holy Spirit will be with us. Take control of us today, dear Lord, as we worship you. Restore us and inspire us with your love. And may your name be glorified, honor, and worship today. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 565, For the Beauty of the Earth. The 
blessings from God and share some experiences you have been through that you think that God is answering your prayers and he's leading and he's guiding with you. You can share at the same time. We are also happy to accept any requests for prayer, for a special prayers. Anybody wants to, to say something and to share? Yes, sister. Yeah, right. Praise God. Just to share my praises to God, uh, one day uh, a friend of mine uh, told me that there is uh, 
a vacant position in one of the facilities here. And I did not working for almost, almost two years. My wife and I decided just me staying at home to take care of my youngest daughter. But then when my parents-in-law came over, I decided to go back to work. I'm not used to this kind of life, just sitting down, doing nothing, because in my life, I used to be on the line. I used to work. So it's a sort of adjustment. At the same time, you know, mind conditioning. So I applied for the position, but before I submitted my, my resume online, I prayed to the Lord, Lord, I don't, know what, I don't know what's your plan, but I have a deal, deal or no deal. I don't like to work on Saturday. If ever you want me to work, then this is not your will. But help me that during the interview, if this issue would come up, help me and guide my lips to answer. And as much as possible, I'm, they, were, they, 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 they give me to, to just take an opportunity to be not working on Saturday. And during the interview, there were a number of uh, applicants. And I, I was one of those. But my second request to God, my second sign, that if my name is included during the interview, then that's a sign that this position is actually for me. And I was called. I was the last one to call. And uh, the lady told me, you're the last one to be interviewed. Are you willing to come? Okay. Good. Yes, I'm willing to come. Then I applied. Then during the, during the interview, we talked about so many things. And then a week after, I was informed that I got a job. You know, sometimes if we partner Jesus in our decision making, especially in times that we need someone to guide us, he will not disappoint us. And he will even prepare the way for you. So anybody would like to share or give some praises to God? Oh, yes, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Okay, yes, Sister Candy. No more praises and requests? Yes, Sister Arlen. Okay. Yes. First of all, I want to clarify one thing. He is not on the diet. I just thought he was a permanent. He 
Yes, I'm right here. All right. Yes, brother. Amen. All right. So those who can kneel down, you can kneel down with me as we pray, and those who can't, just uh, remain seated. <clears throat> Father in heaven. It's a joy to come before you today in this holy hour to bring back the glory and honor and praises of what you have done to us throughout the week. We come before your presence thanking thee for this opportunity of worship this opportunity of gathering together as your children in this church, in this hall. Because worship is vital to our spiritual journey towards heaven. And this experience of praising, glorifying, giving praises to you is not only here on earth, but we may continue to do it, praising to you in that beautiful mansion in heaven that you have prepared since the beginning of time. We would like to thank you, Father, for the life. We thank you for the blessings that you have afforded to us, for the protection, for the good health, for the time that we come together to worship you. 
You are our God, the designer, the creator, and the sustainer of our faith. Aside from thee, nothing is possible. And aside Jesus, we're worthless and doomed to destruction. Thank you for sending your son Jesus who died for us, cleansing us and for making us worthy once again to come to your presence and to become your sons and daughters, a special people belonging to a royal priesthood that we are so privileged to be part, to be part of your family, a family where you promised to be with eternally. You've heard the praises of your people, and you've heard so many requests of prayers. God, I pray, and I ask you today, those names that are mentioned, whenever they are today, whatever their situations, whatever their challenges, I pray, please visit them. Please comfort them. Encourage them. Give them the peace of mind. Help them to grow in your grace. Protect them with your wings, with the wings of your love. Cover them with your grace. May you continually bless them, bless their families, bless their jobs, and all endeavors that they are in. You are our God, our great physicians. You know what our burdens, our problems, and health issues in life. But we believe that if we put everything into your hands, nothing is impossible. You even asked to us to call your name that as we call your name in prayer, you are very much willing to answer and even provide and give great wonders in our means. We claim that, O oh God, we claim that promise today. I pray for the speaker, Sister Jane. May you bless her as she speaks your spoken words. That all of us, as we listen and as we contemplate, your words. We may come out from this hall with so courage, with the passion, with the fire of the Holy Spirit to be part and to share what we have and to a living example and to witness to the world around us. Bless the church, bless our programs, bless each one as we unite together, common cause, to be part of this great mission that you have given to this church. Lord, thank you so much for thy blessings. Thank you so much for your companionship. Thank you so much, Father, for your love and grace and for saving us from sin. Today, we come before you because we submit everything under your hand. Thank you so much, O oh God, for loving us. Thank you so much for granting our humble petitions. All these things I ask. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world, but people messed it up. God started the whole earth over again with an enormous flood, but he saved one guy and his family. And everything was good again, but after lots and lots of years, it seemed like not much had changed. People were still selfish. Still me. And the world still wasn't how God wanted it to be. So God decided to fix everything that had gone wrong. With one very special family. That's where Abram comes in. Abram was an old man. Seventy-five. That's old. Before Abram even knew who God was, he heard him speaking to him. God told Abram to leave his home and go to a new country. Imagine if God told you to move far away, like tomorrow. To Canada. Or Uzbekistan. Well, Abram did it. He left his home and went where God told him to go. And God told Abram that he will make him to a great nation. Which was a big deal because a great nation meant lots of kids. And grandkids. And great grandkids. But Abram didn't have any kids. Remember, he was 75. And that's pretty old. And his wife, Sarai, was 65. Kids never ask a woman how old she is. So this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world, but people messed it up. God started the whole earth over again with an enormous flood. But he saved one guy and his family. And everything was good again. But after lots and lots of years, it seemed like not much had changed. People were still selfish. Still me. And the world still wasn't how God wanted it to be. So God decided to fix everything that had gone wrong. With one very special family. That's where Abram comes in. Abram was an old man. Seventy-five. That's old. Before Abram even knew who God was, he heard him speaking to him. God told Abram to leave his home and go to a new country. Imagine if God told you to move far away, like tomorrow. To Canada. Or Uzbekistan. Well, Abram did it. He left his home and went where God told him to go. And God told Abram that he will make him to a great nation. Which was a big deal because a great nation meant lots of kids. And grandkids? And great grandkids. But Abram didn't have any kids. Remember, he was 75. And that's pretty old. And his wife, Sarai, was 65. Kids never ask a woman how old she is. So God's promise seemed kind of unlikely. Not just unlikely. Impossible. But Abram believed. So he waited. And waited. <sighs> and waited some more. <sighs> For almost 25 years, and when Abram was 99 years old, God told him again that he would have a son. And as part of this promise, God changed Abram's name to Abraham, and Abraham's wife became Sarah. So Abram was now Abraham. And Sarai was Sarah. As a way for them to remember God's promise to them. The promise that they would have a son. God even told Abraham what to name his son. Isaac. And God said Isaac would have two sons of his own. Abraham's family would keep growing and growing and growing. Sarah still had a hard time believing this. She even laughed at God. She was 90 after all. But God always keeps his promises. And a year later, Isaac was born. And years and years later, another special baby was born to the same family. His name was Jesus. Have you heard of him? But just think, if Abraham had stayed home and ignored God, maybe none of that would happen. But that's another part of the story.
It seems that Brother John has muted himself, and so we cannot hear the church service. So I will play a song for our special music. strong. 
Amen. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yet in my weakness, he is there to let me know his strength is perfect. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Dear Father, in my weakness, I ask that you will be my strength at this time. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Speak through me. Let your words be heard at this time, and we will have the willingness to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for always hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have you ever wondered if God calls you? And if God calls you, have you heard him? Will you be able to recognize his voice? There are so many things that are going on in our mind. And if God calls you, would you respond to his call? In the Bible, God does indeed call people for a particular work or purpose. Or simply, God calls you because he loves you and he wants you to know. Let me begin with a story from a Bible. We have a kid's here and I know there are kids online watching too. Who is the first person that God called? Remember when Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, God called Adam. Adam, Adam. Does anyone remember what he responded to God? He said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam, afraid of God? He is his creator, but he knew that he sinned and he was hiding from him. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we are afraid to come to God if we knew we have committed sin. We are so scared to bear ourselves naked to God when in fact God knows everything what's going on with our lives. Sometimes sins make us feel that way. Sins make us feel and makes us think negative things. But you know what? God is calling us if we sin because he can do something for us. He has the solution to the problem. God sent his only son to die for us so we might have eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life of God is eternal life. Another Bible character that God called is Samuel. Samuel was a little boy when his mom brought him to the temple 
for he was a precious gift from God. Samuel served God in the temple with priest Eli, and he grew in the temple, and priest Eli got old. But of course, priest Eli's, Eli have sons, and they were doing mistakes in the presence of God. And they don't listen to their father. So one night, while Samuel was lying down, he heard a voice, Samuel, Samuel. What did Samuel do? He got up right away and ran to priest Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And priest Eli said, no, my son, go back, lie down again, because I don't call you. A second time it happened. The third time it happened, and now priest Eli perceived that God called the boy, and priest Eli told Samuel, if he called again, you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And God talked to Samuel, what will happen to the household of priest Eli for their sins? There is no sacrifice or offering that can atone their sins. And Samuel told priest Eli. Samuel answered God's call immediately. Even though he did not recognize God's voice, he thought it was priest Eli. But he is willing to do what his masters wants him to do, for he considers himself a servant. There will be an instance in our lives when God calls you and yet you did not recognize his voice. But you are willing to do what he wants you to do. God will always someone, God will always send someone to tell you that he is calling you. Samuel was a child, but God used him. He used Samuel to tell Eli about his son's mistakes. Brothers and sisters, God might call you even though we did not recognize his voice. But if we are willing to answer the call, God can use you too in whatever work God thinks you can do. There's a very popular story that we all knew also that God called, and that is Moses. Because it was a dramatic way of calling. God called him after his curiosity why the bush is on fire but was not consumed. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, when the Lord see, he turned aside to look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. So God caught his attention first before calling him. But Moses answered, here I am. And God told him not to draw near to the burning bush and take off his sandals for where he is standing is a holy ground. And God introduced himself to Moses. Then the Lord asked Moses to go to see Pharaoh and to ask him, to bring the children out, the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? What if they ask me, what's your name? What if they will not believe me? But God have all the answers to his questions. And God even showed him signs. He turned the rod into a serpent and turned his son into a leprous like snow and restoring it again. But Moses was not convinced. But Lord, I am not eloquent. I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. I can relate myself here. If I'm asked to do something, I always say, I can't speak well, I can't express myself. But you know what? God told Moses, who made man's mouth, the deaf, the seeing of the blind, have I not the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. But Moses is not finished here. He asked the Lord, can you send someone else? And the Lord's anger was kindled against Moses. And God said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know he can speak well. And you know the rest of the story. Moses somehow needs a lot of convincing. First, he asked himself, who am I? Second, he questioned his capabilities, saying, I'm not eloquent, I'm slow of speech, and I'm slow of tongue. 
He has all the reasons, so he will not do what the Lord asked him to do. But God has an answers to all of his questions and insecurities. God even shows him signs and power of what can do for him. And lastly, God sends Aaron to be with him. We may feel, we may, we may feel the same way too, brothers and sisters. We make questions when God asks you to do something for him. Why me? I am just a kid. I'm just a young adult. I don't have a degree. I can't express myself. We have all the reasons because we feel inadequate to do the work God wants us to do. But God is there. He is our strength. He is to fill in all the inadequacies and insecurities that we felt. And we think too much of ourselves, what we can do for him and what we can achieve. We are so focused on our capabilities that we forgot that God is our creator. He knows what we can do and what we can achieve. As the song says, I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. We can only know the power that he holds when we truly seek and know how deep our weakness is. Moses experienced all God's power because he acknowledged all of his weaknesses. Brothers and sisters, it is not how we think of ourselves, but it is how God thinks of us. It is how what the Lord can do for us and what he can do through us not on what we can do for him because in our weakness, he is our strength. There are still more Bible characters in the Bible that God called. I will just name two more. God asked Gideon to deliver his people. But Gideon asked the Lord to show him signs, making the fleece wet and the ground dry and vice versa. Before he confirmed God's calling, he called Esther to his cousin Mordecai. But he was so scared for her life because she knows that whoever comes into the king's palace without the invitation will be put to death. But cousin Mordecai told him, don't think that you will be spared because you are in the palace. And who knows, perhaps you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther asked for three days of fasting and prayer before she went to the king and said, if I perish, I perish. We may need a few days of praying and fasting before we answer the call, but that is okay. God is so patient in Esther. Through Esther, God's people were saved. On our way home, God calls us to be witness for him. In Acts chapter 22, verse 15, God says, for you will be a witness for me to everyone of what you have seen and heard. We may respond differently to his call, for each of us is unique with different personalities. You may hide from him because you felt guilty of sin. You may answer his call not knowing his voice, or you may need a lot of convincing to do what the Lord wants you to do, or you need few signs to confirm your calling, or like Esther, you need few days of prayer and fasting before you answer the call. We are no different than the people before, but God uses them for they answer the call. Our scripture reading says, Isaiah 43:10, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, before me, there was no God formed, nor shall there be any after me. God is working individually. He is calling you to come to him when you sin, for he forgives you, and you can be a witness for him. He calls you so you may recognize his voice, and you can be a witness for him. He calls you to let you know that all of your imperfections, inadequacies, insecurities, incapabilities, he will be there to fill that in so you can be witness for him. He will show you signs and confirmation that yes, you can witness for him. He is willing and patiently waiting for you to accept his call for the end is near. He is calling you to get involved in finishing his cause. Will you 
answer him? Acts 1.8 says, God says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. That's my prayer. Our closing hymn is number 449, 449, Never Part Again. Stand as we sing.
May we hear your call, dear Father. May we recognize your voice and give us a willingness in our heart to do the work that you want us to do. Empower us with your Holy Spirit as, as we witness for you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessing we pray. As from thy worship we go our ways, guide in life's conflicts all through the day. Save in thy kingdom, thine be the praise. Oh. dismissed.